Brr. Minus 13 before the wind chill. It's got to be minus 18, minus 20. It's a chilly one. Um, crisp. Crisp for sure. Uh, heading out to the barn now. Going to get an early start. It is exactly 8 a.m. You get the little tykes out to the bus here. Uh, I told them I'd drive them down to the bus so they don't become popsicles. Um, and then I'm heading to the barn now. We have eight sets today. A number of horses scratched. Uh, curbs, splints, castrations. Only really one or two scratch sick. Uh, but there will be some scratches on Saturday. I'll bring those to you. Um, I should be able to get the sets done today, I think. I think today. Should be able to get the sets done today. Get those out to you guys. Um, drone on Saturday. The reason I wanted, you know, in a perfect world, we drone next Saturday when everybody, the curbs are different. Splints, okay, away you go. You know, a couple of days, you're good to go. Curbs are different in the sense that we want that to set, right? I've dealt with curbs for, well, since I've been a trainer, 20 years. And cryowing them, blistering them, and then starting back right away never works, ever. It might in the short term, but in the long term, you always have to redo them or they become a problem. It's just one of those things where you really got to let them set. Um, so real fear, I uh, had a curb crowd, uh, magical Tom had a curb crowd. Those are two that I know of. I believe there was two other ones, but I'm not positive. Either way, uh, not the end of the world. I'm gone away next week. Uh, now where our barn is at full power virtually, we only have two horses left, uh, turned out anywhere to come back in. Yes comes back in. Uh, jump in, I'll drive you down. Okay, you go in there and tell Ali right now to be ready in two minutes or he's going to be in big trouble. That boy. He's not like me. I'm early for everything. <laughs> um, uh, where was I? So, yeah, curbs. Uh, Got to go easy with them. I'm gone away next week. My wife and I had booked a vacation a long time ago uh, and decided that this was the time of year when curbs, splints, castrations take place. The tracks, you know, the other day it was plus two. Today it's minus 13. That's terrible. The weather itself is terrible for the horses. So you do have some sicknesses. So this is a good time to let everybody catch up. Maybe give them all. Do you remember a hat, mitts, everything? Okay, in you go. Um, it's a good time to let everybody catch up, right? The healthy, the sicker ones get healthy. The ones with splints and curbs get cleaned up good and cooled down. You know, all of that. So next week's actually great timing. Um, I believe we're going to have a pretty cool announcement too. Uh, another uh, hiring. We have somebody that we're going to hire on to help us out, which is going to work out great for us right now because we literally are a short one person. Right now, great, but also into the spring and summer months. So that'll be, uh, that will be uh, cool. Um, that'll be cool. Uh, what else? So, is that your bus? Please tell me that's not your bus. No, it can't be. It's 803. Our bus comes on the other side. Okay. Um, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> so, uh, great night in Ohio last night. My Jazz, a winner again. Now, for those of you who don't know and maybe aren't following along and don't know the situation, well, she had a terrible year. She got injured. Uh, training back in the weirdest way. It wasn't like a bone or soft tissue. Jumped on her foot. It became abscessed. And it, I don't think as much it came abscessed. I think the wound itself was much deeper than first um, than first understood. Not to mean that they missed anything, but usually when a horse jumps on their I'll do this really quick because there's a lot of people that do understand. Um, when a horse jumps on their foot, usually clean it up. It'll heal up. It's not the end of the world. But with this, it was a little more insidious. It was hiding on, in behind. And quite frankly, there may have been something hiding in there for a while. So... Um, between that and her knee, be, knees or ankle, I think, being sore, and um, her hind ankle got sore. It was just a, a, a real tough year for her. But you know what? We talk about resilience. That's a tough filly, man. You know, she came right out. Soon, first, as soon as she started to sound up in the fall, she got a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And last night, she wasn't awesome, but she won because she's a winner. And she's one win. One win away from being done racing. And the reason I say that is because she gets that last win, there's nowhere to race her. And I mean nowhere to race her. So, can I use her? No, we're gonna breed her. She's gonna be a mummy. 
Yay. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna breed uh, my jazz. So she's one win away from the breeding shed, um, but only one win. So I, I, I didn't think she'd get the two wins right away. Are you but she. Breed her to? I, you know what? That's a great question. I believe I'm gonna breed her to a sire named International Money. I haven't told anybody officially that yet. This would be your close to official announcement. Uh, I like the international monies. Where'd you get that mask? Mom right. set it up for me. Why aren't you wearing a stable mask? Mom set it up for me. These are our future clients that you're associating with. <laughs> um, That's the pug. Um, so Dewey Ann will likely be, uh, or not Dewey Ann, uh, Dewey, I don't know if I'm going to Dewey too. Um, uh, my Jess. <laughs> going to international money. So uh, I would hope there'd be a second, a third, a fourth, and then a win. But if there is a win right away, then that'll be it for my jazz. It's just simple numbers <laughs> and math. There is nowhere else where she can competitively race who outside of a clinic. I told you, international money. No, who are we breeding? We have eight mares. Eight mares that are going to be bred this year. Not two? Eight. So, um, yeah. so uh, there's just nowhere to race the filly. The nominers of 10, she get crushed at the meadows you know you could race her in a claimer but I, I highly doubt our partners in the mayor I gave everybody an option <clears throat> you know and all the stakeholders in in my jazz the, the bigger owners also are on board so it's quite simple <coughs> both her and Compass Rose DC are going to be put away sound as a dollar and bread just because there's I don't want to race them in like Compass Rose DC would have to race up and down through the conditions what Bank out thirty, forty thousand next year, maybe break even, and to do what? Waste another year? We could have had a nice foal out of her. This was a, a stake-winning foal. That's a very, very good horse. A stake-winning uh, filly that was a very good horse for us, and um, worth breeding. So, um, back to my jazz because it was Ohio. The theme. She raced great last night. Was a winner again. She'll be back in that class again next week for one more week. Now. Quite frankly, she's in for a tag right now. It's the only way we could keep her in there. That class is non-winners of four, uh, paramutual races, or um, non-winners of six if you put them in for 20000 So her tag is 29000 yeah, Quite frankly, that's what she's worth. So um, no concerns about somebody scooping her, especially when she's only got one win left in that class. Um, Jekyll and Hyde raced okay. He's a bit of an even Steven, right? Goes out and does his work. Um, hung a bit down the back stretch, come on down the lane, ended up second and 58. Yeah, I was mildly happy with him. Nice horse. But he too, one win away from being out of that class. And when he's out of that class, he's on to on gate. This is all about management. And uh, I like the horse. And, and, and Lauren loves Jekyll and Hyde. But um, reality is there's nowhere to race him. And um, we have to manage our horses properly. So on the side of my jazz she can go be bred. I'm okay with that because my Jess was a good horse for us at two and I do love horses that are tough, resilient animals. Plus, she's out of a sister to a horse that made $900,000. So, there's that also. We put our four ways on to get this guy around us. There he goes. Mm. Nope. Or is it? You're not your bus, is it? Mm, I think so. Well, hopefully it's here it in a minute. Stop there, then. Hopefully it's here in a minute. We'll pull out a little bit. So, we got the weather. Freezing, freezing cold. We got some uh, good news out of Ohio last night. We're training a bunch of babies today. Next week, I'm just going to tell everybody, you don't need to train them at all next week. Just get them all healthy and sound and cleaned up. We'll start fresh when I get back um, the following week. So, um, Saturday, we will have the drone here. Uh, it will be cold, but the drone will be here and we'll be flying and for that very reason. I want to make sure that we get you guys a video. If we can, there's going to be some people that don't get to see their horse. You guys, you know, if they're a little sick, if they had splints and curbs done, I will give you the scratches and give you exactly why they're scratched. But uh, for now, we have to do what's best for the horse. Now, in uh, talking about the horses, we went to the sale on the metal in the metal ends on Monday and we picked up three horses. I had them all to the vet yesterday. Um, a few little bumps and bruises on... Uh, Brenda's horse, uh, Bolt's Power, nothing we can't manage, I believe. And the same as you can imagine for the six-year-old for um, uh, Kings County. Um, as explained when we had purchased the horse, a couple of old issues up front uh, in his front legs that are there. They're present, but they're old and dormant, so to speak. So the game is management with this guy. 
very fast horse. Uh, like what I see, and I like the upside, he can put a little bit of weight on. We have some things we can work on with this guy, but our key, you know what, I'm gonna drive you guys to school. Okay. Our key focus has to be, um, our key focus has to be those front two legs, and that's exactly what we're going to work on. And uh, Rock and Michael, no, not Rock and Michael, Captain Michael Dio. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we bought a horse named Captain Mike and Michael Deal. He's uh, he's he's uh, perfect at the vet. So um, King Kings Kings County. He was good, but he's an older horse. His front legs are a little used up, but that's okay. You know, when you look at them, they did such a tremendous job rehabbing this horse. When you look at his legs, on a physical, just looking at them as a horseman, you would swear there is zero wrong with this horse. Like nothing wrong with him. But under closer examination, there are you can see the the remnants. You can see the 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 formation of an older volcano there that was there. I mean, it wasn't bad because they nipped it in the bud, but it was present. So uh, a great job, obviously. The tremendous horsemen, um, Dom and and the Antonacci family are tremendous horse people, and they definitely took care of this guy. So he'll be in to go. I think what we'll do is. Um, to make everything easier for the horse and for us, for everybody, we'll school him next Friday and race him the following week. Same would go, I think, for Bolt Power. Maybe he might need an extra week because he didn't go since the 28th. Um, we'll see. But those two uh, horses were likely, I would think, school next Friday. We'll see. I haven't talked to Harry about Bolt Power. He's a little different because he's an extra two weeks. Um, and then uh, I'll be as clear as I can. Um, Captain Michael Dio. Uh, Jason said, well, when do you want to race him? I said, when we train him in 56 at Mohawk, that's when he'll race, not until. And this is a project that we're going to take very seriously, get a look at him. We're going to jog him today when the sets are over, have a look at, at uh, old Mike. But uh, Mike got a clean bill of health, uh, straight A's across the board for Captain Michael Deal. So those are the three we bought. Now, uh, what do we got coming up? I thought Swan's Honey was in Saturday. She's in tonight. So I gotta go over tonight and race Swan's Honey at Flamborough. Um, I don't think we have anything in Friday. Saturday, I don't think we have anything. Now Monday, we have the canceled cards. Uh, Harry, very wisely, took um, was able to sneak uh, a training trip into Locatelli. So he'll be mildly tight, but he missed a week here and there. Now the one I'm worried about is White Tiger. With the weather, I'm not training this horse hard. He's going to be going into this start in the open next Monday, not training for two weeks, which is the opposite of ideal. But again, it has to be about the horse first. And White Tiger is a different kind of horse. I'm, you know, he's bled through Lasex before. I'm not uh, training White Tiger in the frigid cold to try and keep him tight. It's just not going to happen. So he might go a mile in 35, but that will be it for White Tiger heading into the open, which will mean he will be short. But there's nothing I can do. Uh, this horse has come a long way and done a lot for us, and I am not going to jeopardize it because it's minus 20 out. That's it. So he's going to race on Monday, probably going to be a little bit short. Um, Locatelli, he'll be tighter uh, in a class below that, so that's good. And Jason uh, trained uh, the big guy, LD's Patrick, yesterday in 2-9. So he'll be remotely tight. He did school in 58. Um, he did train this week. So all three of these horses, I don't think they'll be in peak form come Monday just because they missed time but uh, they're all sound they're all healthy going into Monday's racing so that is it I think you're all caught up I think you're all caught up uh, no point in doing a video today we are going to train the horses very slow today they're going very slow so there's no point really bringing you a video but obviously I will bring you lots of content on Saturday to talk about after the drone session at Tomiko Training Center so I will talk to all of you very, very soon. We're about to get a real early start here in Ontario.